for one, it's Rocky, and I'm back again with another episode of Dandelion, which is brought to you. So today we are doing Gion's ending review. So we'll start with the good. The next cutscene to show up is the one where we're put in front of the wizard. And, uh, or well, Gion is anyways. And honestly, I'm getting a little sick and tired of seeing the wizard's face, but what can you do? Gion seems to have a bit of a bad temper here, and that's okay. The wizard comments on how Gion got all of the competitors to move out of the house and congratulates him on his uh, wish being granted. The wish, of course, is to get revenge for his granny. So that would be the old lady that helped him out, which means that it's basically just to either have Cain die or disappear, we're not sure. Anyways, so Gion wants to know why the wizard is so obsessed with Heejung, which honestly is a valid question and I'm surprised nobody else has asked it yet, but here we are, and the wizard just honestly laughs in his face, doesn't actually answer the question, and uh, doesn't actually answer the question, and comments about how emotions are silly and pretty much stuff like that. Uh, Gian is then sent back and reminded of the game's rules. In the next cutscene, Gian is out saying sorry and goodbye to some of the women that he's played around with, which makes He Jung a little nervous. But he comes back in a really great mood, and she asks him how it went, and he basically just doesn't even answer it and says, I've got a surprise for you, and holds out a bag, which she's a little weary of, but when she opens it up, it's ice cream. And she's really excited, because she says it's been a while since she's gotten any ice cream. So he's excited that she's excited, and he's like, well, I'm glad that you like this, and if you like this, then you'll like this also, and gives her this really lovely card that we don't get to know the contents of, but it seems really heartfelt and very sweet. Either way, she's ecstatic, and he's just happy she's happy. It's a short little cutscene, very cute. In the last cutscene before the wizard's game ends, Jion and Heejung are at the beach and uh, at night, and they're playing with some sparklers, which it's Heejung's first time ever playing with sparklers because her mother always stopped her because she said it was too dangerous. So this is the first time that she ever gets to do it and that makes Jion really excited because he really wants to make a lot of good memories with her and this is a nice way to do it. Um, and while they're playing with it and she's getting lost in the beauty of it all, he kind of snaps her out of it by saying like, this is what I meant by fires of love, which is pretty cute. <laughs> uh, they kiss and we get this CG, and of course she's elated. And he wants to just kind of reaffirm that she's always gonna be by his side no matter what, and of course she she does wanna be by his side and tries to reassure him saying, you know, of course I'm not gonna forget about you and I, I'm, I'm always gonna wanna be by your side. And he seems really focused on making sure that she doesn't forget her promises to him. And she's like accusing him, like, what, do you think I'm a dummy or something? And he's just like, well, I don't know. And she's like, oh, harumph, and stuff like that. Anyway, so they get home at like 2 a.m. and it skips to the next morning. And Gion's gone. But she thinks that he's gone out like to shop for something really quick. And since she has no idea that anything has gone wrong, because the animals don't live with her anymore, she has no idea that he's missing and doesn't know about her. So she goes into the kitchen and starts making lunch and she starts thinking about the other animals and hoping that they're doing okay. And I guess at some point while she's making lunch and thinking about him, she dozes off for a while and then she ends up in front of the wizard. And honestly, this part of the cutscene feels really forced. Like she wasn't out looking for Gion, uh, she just said that she missed him and the wizard's commenting like, oh, have you been looking for him? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm not entirely sure if there was like a time skip that they didn't tell us about or if he's just making assumptions because we never actually get to hear her say anything to him. Like it's literally just him answering questions that no one asked because we don't get to hear or see Hee Jung at all interact with him. So it's really, really weird. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so he says that he's gonna grant her wish to be able to see him, but for a price, and that would be a part of her memories. Um, but he doesn't want to grant it yet, because he wants to watch her in pain for a little while longer, and see her in her dreams. Yeah, anyway, so we get our final cutscene after that, and I guess at some point the wizard granted her wish, because it's been two months since he Jung started getting treated for memory loss, so she says. Uh, but right now she's on the beach, and she's thinking about, like, the 
memory loss and we hear a voice that we recognize and of course it's Gian's voice but we can't see him yet and she gets all scared and confused she's like who are you and um he's asking her about firecrackers because I guess she must be holding a firecracker on the beach and he says finally I found you and she doesn't remember him and he laughs and says, you promised you'd remember, but she's confused. And then she lets slip that she forgot the last few years of her life. So she has no idea who he is. And I'm not sure why she only would have got, uh, started getting treatments two months ago for memory loss when she's literally lost years of her life. So I'm not sure if that was just like a typo on someone's part. Either way, this part kind of confused me. And then Gian goes into talking about how he had her promise several times a day that she wouldn't forget him and that she'd always be by his side. But here she is with no memories of him whatsoever. So he says he'll just fulfill the promise himself and he'll never leave her side from now on. And then we finally get to see him. And he's human, of course. And he's a few years older and his hair is all like down and nice looking and he's wearing this really nice scarf and he looks a lot more mature and he's offering her an orange and that's where it ends. I'm not really sure what to say about this. I mean, like the ending of the this confused me. Like the whole part with the wizard really confused me and then there was the the memory, like how long she's had memory loss issues. And the time skip, like, I'm not sure if it's been several years or two months. It's, it's weird. But anyways, um, I certainly liked him a lot more at the end of the route than I did during the rest of it. Pushing me away from you, Gion? How dare. But they actually met up. Like, this is the first one to actually see her after the wish in the game and all of that. We actually get to see them together. I mean, like, we don't get a CG where it's them together, but they're actually together, which is really nice, and I'm, I'm excited for that. Anyways, let's jump into the bad ending now. So in order to get to Gion's bad ending, you need to start raising hearts with him like normal, and then stop all contact once you get to 113 points. After that, you'll have some time to kill because he's not going to be around, so you might as well start raising some hearts with the other guys. Personally, I suggest Jiwoo and Jizu because they're around a lot, and honestly, Jizu's kind of been stellar throughout this entire route. Like, he's been a nice guy to, like, actually talk to, so I quite like him on this route, but anyways. Uh, on April 16th, you're going to get your first cutscene that confirms that you are on the bad end path. So on April 16th, we are in the art room at school and this cutscene starts out more or less the same as the one on the good path. So she's alone in the art room with TJ. Uh, the art exhibition is just around the corner. She, this is her last one. She wants to make it count because she's sad. She's going to have to move away to Busan again and live with her mom or soul, I think. I, I can't remember which it is now. Either way, she has to go live with her mom and she has to quit making art and EJ wants to walk her home, but she says to go on ahead and she's going to stay the night and keep working on this. And that completely surprises him. And then he starts feeling sad and he says that she shouldn't move away because she looks so happy when she's drawing. And then it all goes downhill from there. So EJ grabs her hand and she's, uh, he Jung screams in surprise and he asks her to be his girlfriend. He's basically begging her to date him and saying that she'll see his charms once they're romantically involved and that she can't see his country charms now because she's a city girl and she's confused, but he's still going on about her being his dream girl and she decides screw this and runs away and wants to pretend it and that he never confessed. It just never happened. And then that's it. Stuff goes on as normal. On April 25th, we get another cutscene and it's uh, school's over, the exhibition's over and all that stuff. She's sending her belongings to her mother's place. Her living room is empty. And she's thinking about Gion and she wishes that she could tell him everything that's on her mind. And suddenly the doorbell rings, but it's TJ. And he wants to take her to the station on the restaurant's motorcycle. And it's got this big chicken logo on it and everything. And she does not like that. And he tells her that he refuses to give up on her. And that's where it ends, with her totally uncomfortable. It's just, just great. All right, so in this ending, she never actually gets to see Gion again and moves home with her mother. It's kind of a crappy ending, but at least she's not being drugged, so bonus? <laughs> Overall, it's not really my favorite route, I've got to say, but I do love Gion's turnaround. 
I vastly prefer the true him to the overly cutesy version of him or the rude butt face version. A nice little mix between the two is quite lovely. And his backstory is really sad. And it really started, like, I really started feeling for him and it just really tugged on the old heartstrings, you know? Like him and his granny and all that. It's very sweet. And I understand, like, why he acts the way that he does. I get that he's scared and I really do feel for him, honestly. Because he is... He is a sweet guy, it's just he's been through so much rough shit in his life, so I, I get it, you know? <sighs> and of course, at the end, she actually gets to see him again, which is amazing! That's all I wanted out of one of these ending cutscenes, was for them to actually get to see each other again. So that makes me really happy. I... I don't know. I liked the end of the route, but the whole route, like the road to get there was just really long and winding and not particularly my cup of tea, but I know there are a lot of people out here that love this little stray kitty, so I get you. I do. And I, I do have some love for my Gion, but yeah, like I said, it's not my favorite. Um, anyways, I think next we're going to be doing, yeah, Jihei, because obviously I'm going to save Jion for last, because he's my absolute favorite. He's a doll. So Jihei is going to be next. Um, so I hope you guys are prepared for that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you want to see more videos from me, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.